Well, they're the same just because of the nature of them, because because their form choices, that's what makes them the same. So you might say that in a world of choices, there is a different order of choice, or a higher order of choice, but that's a choice of purpose in mind, mm -hmm. and that's not a form choice. Yeah, it's, you might just say it's, it's, it's like attempting to choose where no choice is possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like some of you have seen those movies, uh, quantum physics, uh, down the rabbit hole, and uh, what the bleep do we know, mm -hmm. and I think at one point in there, I think he's talking about, like, he's a physicist and he's saying something like, what is the marital status of the number five, or something like that. What is the marital status of the number five? And he goes, it, we go, well, that's, that's not a real question, that's just not a real question, because number five doesn't have a marital status. <laughs> Is it, is it single, or is it married, you know, is, we don't ask that. But, we would look at a lot of questions in this world, like, do you like Coke or Pepsi, uh, better, as being a real question. But, from the higher perspective, that's like asking, what is the, the marital status of the number five. It doesn't really, it doesn't make sense, because it's, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a reality. Not matter what we choose in the world, like if we choose one marriage partner, or divorce somebody else, or take one job, it will have consequences in the world, but it doesn't really matter. It only matters if it's inspired or not inspired. Exactly. So, so we could, you know, when sometimes people will say, oh, divorce, like it has like a negative connotation. No, not necessarily. Uh, if it's ins an inspired divorce, and everyone knows what that is, <laughs> whether it's with a relationship or whatever, you get this strong call that you're to kind of move on in some kind of situation, and you feel this just this joy and this ease and this relief. It's not like divorce is bad and marriage is good, and it's the same thing. You know, it's like. You could have an ego-guided marriage, and it's like getting married for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> or for the wrong reason, which would be, you know, an, from an ego sense. So really, that's, that's it. It's, okay. It comes down to, is this, is this a, a fear-based motivation, or is this an inspiration from the Holy Spirit? And that is the only question, that's the only thing that matters. It's not so much the, the forms. So if you don't have that inspired feeling, it's probably better to wait till you have it. I would say that, that with the Holy Spirit, it just seems to be the more tuned into the Holy Spirit you get, that it does get more and more obvious what decisions really are already made, but they're, they seem to be on the, on the surface of consciousness, like they're yet to be made, and all decisions are already made. But, but it becomes more and more and more obvious. The more fine-tuned you become, the more guided, the more intuitive. Um, these are not difficult choices at all. It's, in fact, it's like, decide for God for me. It's like you're really saying, lead my life. Lead my, you know, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? You know, that starts to become like your mantra. And not that you have to take a conscious thought with every, every single decision. You know, he even says that in the Rules for Decision, that it's impractical to kind of, okay, what, what, did you have me do? what would you have me do with every single decision? But you start to kind of, you get more in a mindset of surrender to the Holy Spirit, and flowing with the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, you can actually have sets of decision, strings of decision that are with the Holy Spirit, without individually making those decisions. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good general rule of thumb that um, 
if you're not sure, then, you know, you really have to come deeper inside to the, Jesus says there is one question that you can ask with any situation, what is it for? You, you hear the purpose sound of that, what is it for? That's, that's the one question you can safely ask. And that's so different from like the ego trying to look at the form and say, okay, what are the pros and what are the cons? You know, it's really tuning into guidance. What would you have me do? You know? And you get better at it. And, and yeah, you shouldn't feel a sense of pressure, like, okay, I gotta make a decision about my wife tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in turmoil, that's painful, and that's probably not a good place to decide from. Like, I'm in turmoil, so this must not be good, so I should get out. Like, that's not inspired. Yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. Just like if you had, if you had two children that were fighting and screaming at each other, that's not... Uh, a good decision-making state. You know, that's why we pull them apart. We say, now you go in there, cool down. You go over there, you cool down. Time out. And it's time out to to ponder, reflect. You know, let let the the emotions come down. You're revved up into emotional states. Um, that is not good to make a decision. Some of you have noticed that about politics, where they, they become masters at making commercials that evoke emotions because they want you to make a decision based on that emotional state. And it could even be hate or fear. Don't vote for this guy, you know, because of, you know what he, he's done or she's done, this and this. Bypassing cognition, bypassing reason, and going for an emotional decision. So yeah, you know, that's that's a big trick of the ego to try to to rev it up. And how many of us in the heat of emotions say things that we regret saying, Oh, I wish I could take that back. I didn't mean that, you know, it's like backpedaling. But you told me <laughs> I was in an emotional state. <laughs> Please don't take that to be who I am.